books are to be tasted, others to be swallowed, and some few to be chewed and digested. Civilization IV Warlords is the first expansion pack to our 2005 PC Game of the Year, Civilization IV. And as you can expect, it's really, really good. There are basically two ways to enjoy Warlords. If you like the regular Stone Age to Space Age game of Civ, where you guide your little nomadic tribe throughout history, you can play that in Warlords, but with a bunch of new content. There are six new civilizations to play as or against. There are the Celts, Ottomans, Koreans, Carthage, the Vikings, and the Zulu. There are new wonders of the world that you can build as well, such as the Great Wall Wonder, which is probably the coolest wonder in the expansion because this literally builds a great wall around your borders and you see it on the map and everyone knows that, yeah, that guy built a great wall. Each of these new civilizations, of course, have their own unique units. There are a few new gameplay improvements as well. There's a new diplomacy feature called Vassalage, which basically lets you subjugate another civilization to your rule. So if you've ever been in one of those games where you're crushing this guy, but it's taking forever, but you know, you, it's just a matter of time before you win, um, one way they'll get around that is they'll become your vassal, which means that you don't have to crush them and they'll still be around, but they will still kind of serve you and help you out anytime you need. Warlord takes its name from the new Warlord unit, which is kind of like the old Great General units you used to see in the older Civ games. Basically, if you played Civ 4, you know you get these great people, such as the great artist or the great engineer, and these are very unique leaders that give you special abilities. The great generals and these Warlords are very cool in that they really boost your warfighting abilities. You can put a great general in a city and assign him so it can create units faster or give units experience points when they're finished building or else you can assign a great general to one of your armies and they can join a stack, they join a specific unit and boost it. You can take a regular stack of military units and make them kind of like an elite stack just by adding a great general and your odds in battle go up dramatically. The real cool new content in the expansion though are the six scenarios that are set mainly in the ancient world. Um, these offer a very different gameplay style than you kind of expect from the regular campaign game. Instead of having to worry about going from the Stone Age to the Space Age, you can now just focus in on specific eras in history. And each of these scenarios basically rewrites the game from the rules to the technologies and the units. So instead of feeling like it's just, oh, this is just like the 300 year history section of the regular game, you actually get a full-fledged experience. You can be Alexander the Great as he attempts to conquer eastward through the Persian Empire. You can play as any of the major Chinese factions as they attempt to reunify the Chinese Empire in the fourth century BC. Um, another ancient world scenario is the Rise of Rome, which lets you not only play as Rome, but any of the other major powers of the era, so you can try to conquer the Mediterranean that way. Um, there's also a Peloponnesian War scenario, which is set up between Sparta and the Delian League, which was led by Athens. And this is a very kind of cool scenario because Greece is an archipelago of islands, and this dictates the, the pace of the scenario. There's a lot of naval combat, there's a lot of mobility as you move armies around by ships, but then you also have a lot of land combat as you attempt to take city-states. In addition to the China scenario, there's a new Genghis Khan scenario set in the Far East. It's, it really turns convention on its ear because the Mongols didn't quite believe in building up civilizations, they kind of believed in tearing them down. So your job in here isn't so much to build cities, it's to you know, sack and pillage them, tear them down. And the Mongols are nomadic as well, so instead of having to build a city to build new units, you rely on the Mongol nomadic tribes and they settle in a certain area and create new, new, new units from there. So depending on if you settle in a grassland, you'll create new cavalry units each turn. Or if you put it in a desert, you get infantry units and so on. So where you place the camp is very important. It's also, if you lose a camp, you're in trouble. The new Omen scenario is also pretty cool in that it's set in 18th century North America. You either play as the British or the French, and the goal isn't so much to conquer it, it's to convert everyone to your respective religion. But there's a supernatural element in Omen. The Divine Spirit appears at regular intervals and casts his wrath upon whoever's in last place. So there's a lot of pressure on you to kind of maintain your lead, and if you slip behind, to get back into the lead, otherwise you're in big trouble. The sixth and final scenario is really cool. If you've ever hated those barbarians that plagued us throughout all civilization games, you can finally play as them. And your goal is to take down those haughty civs. So you basically get to play as the barbarians. You get units that you can build and just go out there and tear down as many cities as you can before you run out. The six new scenarios in Warlords are very cool. They're also very challenging. They're kind of treated for 
the aggressive Civ players or the veterans who know what they're doing. Beginners would probably want to stick around with a regular campaign game though, the one that lets you sit back and build up your civilization and not really have to worry about any time limits or anything like that. If you're a Civilization fan, there's no doubt you really need to pick up Civilization 4 Warlords. Let's <laughs> go.